Kongres 590 na scenie liderów łączy wszystkich, łączy ekspertów z Polski i zagranicy. Bardzo gorąco zapraszam do obejrzenia wystąpienia Richarda Taryna, eksperta do spraw innowacji branży fintech oraz Chin. Hello everyone out there at Congress 590. My name is Rich Turin and I'm sitting in Shanghai and I so wish I could be there with you. Today I've got a fabulous presentation for you on China's digital yuan. And what I'm going to do is to take you through why it's important for you, Poland and the world. So let's dive right in. Now, the first thing I need to tell you is China's central bank digital currency, or you'll hear me say CBDC, is not cryptocurrency. That's the first and most important thing that I have to tell you. During the week, that cryptocurrency is crashing. It's in the news everywhere. So first thing, CBDC, China's digital yuan, is not crypto. Now, you may be thinking, why is this important for me? I live in Warsaw, which is 6,943 kilometers away from Beijing. And the reason is that there are two major macro trends that we all need to follow. And the first one is that the innovation center of gravity is moving to the east. If we want to know who's doing the most innovative things in financial technology, central bank digital currency, it's not in the West. It's not in the U.S. It's not in the EU. Really, it's in China and it's in other Asian countries. So macro trend one. Innovation, center of gravity, moving toward the east. And with that, we've got another problem, and that is that stereotypes die hard. And what's the stereotype? China copies. It doesn't innovate. In fact, it said so in Harvard Business Review. How could they possibly be wrong? But if you look carefully, here's the map from Bloomberg showing where countries have plans to issue central bank digital currencies. And where are they? They're all in Asia. Look at that pink, all in the east. What's the second macro trend that is ever so important for all of us? And that is the evolution of money. And that's what we're really going to talk about today when we talk about China's CBDC, or digital yuan, is the evolution of money. And we watched it go from coins to paper to Visa and MasterCard, maybe then to PayPal and pay, uh, Apple Pay. Then finally, we saw WeChat Pay and Alipay until finally we get to the end stage of evolution where we're at the digital yuan. Okay, so let's go back and look. What was the biggest evolutionary move in 2014? It wasn't the launch of Apple Pay. In 2014, China launched WeChat Pay and Alipay, and they were unique because they used QR codes, as you can see, and they were completely made in China. And what they did was to bring free and immediate payment to everyone in the nation. So finally, people could pay from one person to another, and the payment was received immediately. And guess what? It was 100% free to make that payment. So big impact? Oh, yes, it was. Right now, the amount of mobile payment in all of China is some $78 trillion. Big number? Yeah, how big? Twice the number of credit card transactions made all over the world by Visa, MasterCard, and all the other major credit card brands. Amazed? Yes, it is truly amazing. So let's visualize 
that impact. So we've got a $78 trillion market, which is more than four times China's GDP. Now, let's say, well, is that really, how much is this? Well, think about this. U.S.'s GDP is $23 trillion, and their total credit card use is $8 trillion, which means one-third of GDP is spent on credit cards. Does that mean anything? Yes, because those are goods and services in China that have all gone digital, and that's important. So what was the trick? What did WeChat and Alipay do that was so important? Well, here's a picture of a little shop and they sell dumplings. And if you look, in order to take a payment by WeChat and Alipay, they have a little QR code, the green and the blue symbol. You walk up there, you take a picture with your phone, and you can make the payment. What you see is that there's no technology being used by the person in the shop here. So everybody in China could use WeChat Pay and Alipay to receive payment, even those without any telephone lines or internet lines. Here's my electric bill. This is mine, and it's got a QR code, so I can, if I want, I can scan and pay it using WeChat. Now, I mentioned before, 2014 was when Apple Pay launched. Now, I call that exclusion by design. Why? Because in order to use Apple Pay, you actually had to buy a brand new iPhone 6. So think about that lady in the shop with the WeChat Pay and Alipay QR codes in front of her dumpling store, she would have to buy a new phone to be able to use payment from Ali, from uh, WeChat, uh, from sorry, from Apple Pay or from Google Pay. So she is excluded. In fact, under this system, but she was included under WeChat Pay and Alipay, and that's why it took off and made China go cashless. So let's look at the next generation coming into China, and that are that is central bank digital currencies. And the important thing to note is that central bank digital currencies are issued by the government. They are national currencies, no different than a paper bill, but they're digital, whereas WeChat Pay and Alipay are actually corporate currencies. They are run by companies who put them together. So one thing we have to acknowledge is that the central bank digital currencies borrow from cryptocurrency. In fact, there are about 80% of the DNA is shared between the two, and that's a lot. They're very different. One is central bank issued. Cryptocurrency is based on faith, like Bitcoin, right? But the important thing is that Central bank digital currencies, most of them, but definitely China's, uses this concept of token. And if you look below my shoulder here, you can see a long string of letters. That's the actual token that is corresponds to 10 RMB on my my personal digital uh, wallet. So there's an important distinction and there's an important property that we get from tokenizing money. It means that we don't need a bank account anymore and you can use to a certain limit China's digital yuan without a bank account. And that's revolutionary and a big help to those who don't have the bank accounts or who are un people who are unbanked. So I can make a payment from me to you without using WeChat, without using an Alipay, without using Union Pay, which is the credit card of China, or without using banks. So I can digitally transfer money because the money is digital from my phone to your phone and nobody in between, and it's free 
and it's immediate and that's huge now one quick comment everybody assumes this is on blockchain but in fact for in china's central bank digital currency they built this without blockchain for one simple reason china's really big 1.4 billion people and to make a payment system fast enough they couldn't use blockchain so they used a cryptographically encoded database but the important word is database rather than blockchain now the question that everybody has is is this private and is this anonymous and the next question i understand i'm talk, talking to people from poland freedom versus control is a central bank digital currency a new way to control people and the answer is no central bank digital currency is software and we can build this software so the government does not have access to your personal data it doesn't know who is spending what so basically you've got a system set up where the banks will take care of knowing who you are identifying you uh, verifying that you're the real person you say that you are but the government will have no knowledge of who is spending that token they won't be able to connect the two now in our current world we do connect bank accounts with people when they don't pay taxes or when they steal money now to do that we go to a court and we get a judge to allow the government to see who's connected to the bank account and it's going to be the same thing with central bank digital currency so why is china doing this look china has already gone cashless with wechat pay and alipay what's the motivation for china to go to this next level and issue a central bank digital currency very simple china is going for a digital society and it already has a digital economy on an unparalleled level more than 50 percent of all of the retail sales in china are on e-commerce platforms and we can compare that with the u.s which is 13 percent or the uk which is high at 28 or italy my country, 9%. So China's already unparalleled at e-commerce. It's also making a new world. And this is a part that's very important when you think about the digital euro. It's thinking for a future with 5G, with IoT connected devices and factories where it's not humans paying anymore. It will be machines paying and they're going to pay with central banks bank digital currency not visa or mastercard so finally financial inclusion this is the other big motivator for china even after wechat and alipay china has some 200 plus million people who don't have bank accounts so by issuing a central bank digital currency we can give them better access to the financial system and that's something that poland can certainly relate to back in 2003 Poland had 58% of the population unbanked and still has 13% compared to Germany next door with only 1%. Now, how is this going to happen? Very simple. By making payment with central bank digital currency or the digital yuan so simple that all it takes is this card or a card like this to make payment you won't even need a cell phone if you're a rural farmer who doesn't have access to data plans or a lot of expensive technology this little card is all that you're going to need finally most importantly it's a backup system for wechat and alipay it's not designed to destroy them in fact it will have a very very different market so what does this mean on an international scale most importantly China is the world's largest exporting country 
So what you can expect is that things bought from China will be paid for using digital currency. So there's a smash up. There's going to be a conflict between the dollar, which is currently used to buy things from China, and eventually the digital yuan. And the reason people are going to use digital yuan is because of digital logistics systems that make buying with digital yuan cheaper. These are based on blockchain and they actually already exist in the south of China. And this is one example, Trustful, which is from Ant Group. These blockchain digital systems will make buying cheaper and even cheaper when you use digital RMB, which will make payment fast and almost immediate international cross-border transfer and very inexpensive. Now, who's going to do this? You say, well, America doesn't want to do that, and that's fine. China just invested a trillion dollars in the Belt and Road Initiative, and the countries who are in the Belt and Road are going to eventually start to buy from China using the digital yuan. Now, why very simple. At a time of great turmoil with sanctions, China wants to reduce its dependence on the dollar, and it wants to reduce its dependence on the SWIFT money transfer system. It watched Russia get sanctioned and get cut off, and it looks to the digital yuan and other systems as a way to manage the risk of cutoffs of, from the money transfer system SWIFT. Now, will China use the digital yuan to break sanctions with Russia and Ukraine today? I have to answer that question. No, it's way too new and is not able to do that. But BRICS countries, every country here, particularly Russia, India, and China, in the next two or three years will launch central bank digital currencies. So they are not sanction busters today, but maybe in the next three to five years, look for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa all launching CBDCs to potentially use them for that. What's our takeaway? Takeaway number one, money is evolving. We don't use stones anymore. And central bank digital currency is a natural evolution of money don't be afraid of it. Number two, if you want to know what that cashless digital future looks like, look to China today. They are already there. They are your crystal ball if you want to see the future. And finally, Poland will use the digital renminbi or the digital yuan. Why? It will save money. Poland imports tremendous amounts of good from China, and the cheaper they are, the better. And if it requires a digital currency to make them cheaper, why not? It just makes sense. Thank you so much for listening to me, and it's been a pleasure talking to you all. And here is my book in Polish. So thank you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Thank you all so much for listening. Eksperci ze świata, eksperci z różnych stron i tym właśnie ekspertem, którego wykładu Państwo przed chwileczką wysłuchali był Richard Taryn, ekspert do spraw innowacji branży fintech oraz Chin. A możliwa jest obecność ekspertów z zagranicy dzięki naszym partnerom strategicznym, a są nimi Enea S.A., PGE, Polska Grupa Energetyczna, PKN Orlen, partnerom głównym plus są PKO Bank Polski, Grupa PZU i Grupa Tauron.